All participants are going to be muted. Um, this is so we don't have any issues with audio outside of uh, the ones that we may have with the speakers themselves. Um, we do want questions, so you can put these in the chat window in WebEx. And some of the questions that we're sort of after today are, you know, if you're already using DNS tab, what do you, you know, what do you, what else do you want to see out of it? Uh, what issues have you had with it? Um, and we, you know, we do have Robert Edmonds on the um, webinar today, so you'll be able to ask directly or uh, sort of um, encourage him maybe to add some things that you, you might want. So please do enter those, uh, and you can enter those in uh, during the entire webinar. All right. So presenters, myself, I'm Eddie Winstead. I'm a sales engineer here at ISC. Um, please don't let the sales part fool you. I've been doing DNS and DHCP things for over 20 years now. Um, and I also do professional services for ISC. So if you are a customer of ISC and you have an issue, uh, this is likely the face that will show up at your site. Um, as I said, we have Robert Edmonds on the call with us. Um, Robert is very recently um, a um, member of Fastly. He's a software engineer there. Prior to that, he was at Farsight Security for quite a while, a couple of years, and then prior to that, um, we were actually co-workers at one point here at ISC. Um, he's the primary author of DNS TAP, so again, we're really, really excited to have him on the call, and uh, we'll let him do most of the uh, in-depth details of what we have going on with DNS TAP. So the issue here we have is we want to do, usually we have, so we have name servers, and they're, they're, ask, they're asking queries, they're answering queries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, generally, there has been interest in logging these queries um, for many, many differing reasons. Uh, sometimes you're just using these logs to troubleshoot issues. Sometimes you're required to have query logs uh, by corporate policy or some other policies that um, you're subjected to. So your options have historically been these two. You could do this query logging within the name server itself. Um, or you could do some packet capturing external to um, the name server. So query logging itself on the name server, this is, you know, this is good. Um, however, there's some drawbacks, uh, particularly in terms of with bind. We get, our, we get query info, but we do not get the response that we have given. Um, and there's, unfortunately, quite a significant performance impact. The minimum that I usually hear is about a 30% performance hit when you enable query logging. Um, I've heard much, much worse horror stories than that as well. So at this time, we do have a little poll question for you to fill out if you like. Um, do you do query logging currently, um, or do you do wire capture of DNS traffic? And we'll refer to the results in a bit here. So again, as I mentioned, there is significant performance impact for query logging. So it, it turns out that parsing, formatting, um, messages to text and shipping these off to a file uh, is quite pricey. Um, so other methods were investigated to, to how do we get around this, this performance problem but get the same data. So external packet capture is sort of the other alternative historically. Um, this got you around the performance issues. However, usually you had additional infrastructure that you had to stand up to be able to take in all this data or process the data. Um, and there's this other thing where you, you know, many times we think very simply of DNS messages as being, you know, uh, one packet, but many times these, these um, there are actually some fragmentations going on at the, the lower la layers. Um, so you have, you know, your, your DNS server and the OS that your DNS server is running on typically would handle these, you know, packet assembly um, and fragmentation issues um, for you. So this is one of the drawbacks of having the external packet capture. Um, and at this, at this moment, I'd like to sort of just ask Robert, you know, historically when when DNS tab was first thought of, like what you know, what what were your experiences in the, in terms of uh, the external packet capture and its issues? I know you spent a lot of time working on uh, passive DNS both at ISC and Farsight. 
So if you could give us some, some insights into the historical beginnings of DNS tab, I think that'd be very interesting. Robert, you may be on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Uh, yeah. So um, yeah, historically, um, the, you know, the the original, uh, you know, the, the origin of of DNS tap was basically um, when I was working on passive DNS at ISC. We had a PCAP based uh, passive DNS sensor, and it had to deal with. Um, you know, uh, re reassembling fragmented uh, eDNS responses and the checks, you know, stuff you've listed on your on your slides there, uh, matching up queries and responses. But the but the um, the really uh, the really compelling uh, thing that that inspired DNS tap was uh, the Bailiwick problem with um, uh, passive DNS replication. Uh, I'm not going to really go into that how we solved that with packet capture, but it was a very um, uh, brute force uh, solution there. Okay. Um, so I, I so yeah, the, the idea is you you need to know what uh, zone uh, a record uh, came from uh, in a particular response, and that is not information that gets carried on the wire and is is, is it's invisible to an external uh, PCAP based uh, sensor. Um, so then the idea was uh, let's if we go into the um, uh, recursive DNS server itself, we can just export that information. Um, that's where it came from, um, but we realized um, passive DNS replication is such a, a niche uh, use case um, that you know people might not be interested in adding that feature to uh, uh, their DNS servers. So we've sort of um, built it into a general um, uh, message capture facility, and so we added all. So so passive DNS replication, if you're if you're familiar with DNS tap. Uh, it only uses one of the um, message types. I think it's like resolver response. But you now we've got about a dozen or so different message types so far. So we we we, gener we, su we successfully uh, generalized it and 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 made it sufficiently interesting that, that people were uh, interested in, in adding it, or people like ISC and and Internet Labs and and CZ Net were interested in, in adding it to the service. So that's, that's basically where it came from. Okay, excellent, excellent. That's that's really really good info. Um, so this brings me to this slide. Um, this is sort of, uh, for those of us that have had to endure the, the types of things that you were just talking about, uh, we, we've had a lot of hope for DNS tap. <laughs> so we're really excited to have it in bind. Uh, we know there's been a bit of a delay in getting it in bind, so um, this, you know, the, the sort of, this image sort of, uh, you know, is, is the world saying, hey, you know, let, let us get our DNS logs and uh, the internet can do what it does. So. Um, now, you mentioned some of this a little bit, Robert, but um, can you talk about historically, like, why you made the decisions to use the the um, the formats and the tools that you, you chose to implement with DNS tap? I mean, specifically for this slide, we're talking about protocol buffers, but what was sort of what led you down that path and what has been your experience with it? Well, the answer to that question is kind of, of uninteresting. Uh, the reason we used protobufs was because um, at the time I was working on SIE at ISC, and we were using protocol buffers for all of the uh, uh, various types of data that we were carrying. And so it was just, hey, I'll use this uh, technology because I've you know, used it for all this other stuff. It was, it was basically the, the, mo the thing I was most familiar with for that application. Um, but yeah, uh, and since then there, there there have been you know other uh, other you know similar um, uh, technologies in the same space um, that are sort of similar to protocol buffers. So if we're, if we were doing it from scratch today, we would probably want to you know carefully uh, uh, consider the um, the various technologies that are available. But this is but DNS tap is um, a few years old at this point, and some of that stuff just wasn't available then. I mean, gotcha. It's, yeah, so that's it's, it's what we were familiar with at the time, basically. Gotcha. Okay. Now, um, so one of the other goals that I gleaned from your a lot of this obviously is coming from your uh, information there at DNSTap.info. But can you talk about what you did in terms of um, adding message duplication directly into the DNS server? Um, you mean the speci specifically the choice to just duplicate messages, or yes. yeah? So the idea there is that we were most familiar with processing um, 
DNS packets off the wire, um, and and having a um, like the existing query log stuff would would give you this cooked uh, format. It would you know format it into a um, you know a message suitable for sending to syslog or or whatever. But most most of the um, password DNS technology we had developed at ISC at the time um, was based on uh, processing uh, wire format packets. Um, so the idea there was if we duplicate the messages that come off the wire, um, it would be easy to integrate into existing uh, PCAP-based stuff, and we didn't have to deal with um, vendor-specific uh, formats. Like if you go, I think one of my earliest slide decks, I compared like um, bind four, which is where query logging came from originally, versus uh, bind nine versus unbound, and they all use different syslog formats. So if you're processing um, syslog messages, you usually end up with uh, you know a, a bunch of regular expressions for parsing the various formats, and they all use slightly different formats. So it was, it was just a matter of um, you know if we had a vendor neutral format that that you know if you had different servers, they would generate uh, um, you know hopefully equivalent messages, and you wouldn't need a bunch of uh, 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 you know, a bunch of corner cases for each of the different servers. So it was just just a matter of um, this is how we wanted to uh, architect it, basically. Gotcha. That that does bring up an important point, though. I mean, I, you know, this is um, a lot of the intent with DNS tap was to be vendor neutral. So um, if you if you happen to be on the webinar and you're running an environment where you have a mixed um, environment where you're running bind and unbound or CZNIX, not, whatever you're running. Um, hopefully, I guess, the, as Robert mentioned, the, the, the idea is that even though you have all these differing types of name server software, you could be pulling out similar messaging from them. Um, and then at, at this point, Robert, this is where we talk a little bit about some of your architectural decisions. So I, I have some text here, and then on the next slide, we have a um, sort of an architectural diagram. So it's up to you. Do you want me to advance to that while you talk about this, or do you want to sit here with the text? Um, actually, well, I'd like to make a, a point about um, implementations uh, versus mm -hmm. interfaces. Um, okay. So the the DNS tap interface is basically the the protocol buffer um, message schema. It says this is this is the names of the fields, these are their types, and this is the information that gets carried in these fields. And um, that's if you're running software that consumes uh, uh, DNS tap uh, encoded payloads, that's all the information you need. If you're uh, generating them, that's also all, all the information you need. So that's that's uh, that's sort of the interface. And, and the implementation is the is the you know the the back end the implementation specific uh, stuff and this is this the stuff on this slide right here that you mentioned is is how we um, implemented it in in um, bind and also unbound and CZNIC since they, they share uh, uh, some of the same uh, back end code um, but we we, we we implemented it this way because um, we were highly concerned with with performance we didn't want to um, degrade uh, you know um, the performance of the name servers, and so was, that's the main main complaint that people have with um, uh, query logging. Usually, is that it's not particularly uh, well well optimized um, in in the various uh, name server implementations. So we did you know use circular queues and asynchronous buffered I/O, and and uh, um, since we don't use syslog and we don't we don't use um, uh, we don't, we, don't, we don't use the syslog, you know, uh, library call. Uh, we, we can we can drop uh, payloads that exceed the uh, exceed the capacity of the queue instead of um, you know blocking the server. Um, but yeah, uh, so we were it was it was mainly um, you know we need we need in order to in order for people to be able to turn this on, uh, we wanted to not you know kill the performance of the server under load. But yeah, um, yeah, go you can go to the next slide um, okay. if you want to. Um, well, I'm not sure if you want to cover this or you want me to explain it, but this is basically um, the diagram of, of, of uh, um, this is basically how um, uh, I think I wrote, I think I made this slide when Unbound was the only DNS tap enabled DNS server. Um, and I think um, Bind also uses a very similar or identical 
architecture, but but in in general, um, it, you'll, your names are really multi-threaded, and we basically just added this extra DNS tap IO thread that receives input from each of the uh, worker threads, and it's basically a um, uh, each so the so the DNS tap IO thread has a uh, has a set of single producer single consumer queues with each of, of the DNS worker threads, and it basically. Uh, pulls pulls down data from each of those of those queues and and serializes it into that um, that little uh, arrow or that little curved arrow outside of the, of the name server process. But yeah, that's that's uh, the high level uh, architecture there. Um, okay. If you want to cover any bind specific stuff. No, that's uh, you know I think uh, you covered it well enough for for our purposes today. Um, if anyone out there has any. Um, um, specific questions about these parts, please do put those in the question and answer and I'll um, uh, I'll, I'll make sure we, we address them. All right, and our poll is finishing up, I believe. But while, we, while we're waiting for that, um, so we, we mentioned this previously, but um, these are, you know, DNS tap is um, for available on unbound not 2.x and bind currently. Um, there is plans for NSD implementation and uh, power DNS. And do you, you know, Robert, I know you're extremely busy. Do you have, do you have any timelines for these types of things? But uh, again, not holding you to any of them. Yeah, um, so uh, for, for our, the original DNS tab implementation I did back in 2013, 2014 was with Unbound, and we sort of did a little bit of uh, early, uh, you know, work in progress type stuff for not it was 1.5 at the time, but um, it's, it sort of seems like the, the vendors that are that are interested in implementing DNS TAP have sort of taken it over, you know, uh, and integrated into their own product uh, timeline. So I don't have any I don't have any special knowledge of when uh, uh, when these other uh, servers will implement it. I mean, I think I've even heard of uh, some um, proprietary uh, DNS implementations that are interested in, in, in uh, implementing it as well. But I, I, I'm sort of uh, sort of out of the loop as far as, as uh, uh, whether and, and which implementations are, are implemented on, you know, whatever uh, product timeline. So sorry, gotcha. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't know. Sorry. Okay, that's interesting that some of the um, possibly um, commercial products are going to pick it up as well. So. The more the merrier, in in, uh, in my opinion, for this. So that's good. Uh, our poll finished, and uh, about 31% of you are doing query logging. 23% uh, do it uh, when necessary. Uh, it's interesting uh, for cap uh, packet captures. 31% uh, as well are doing this all the time, and as a, as I would expect, actually 37% of you do this. Um, on demand, which I assume means when you're trying to find out some sort of issue, trying to debug some sort of issue. All right, so now to the, um, and let me just check the Q&A if we've gotten any uh, questions that we need to answer at the moment. Okay, yeah, some of these we're going to get to in just a second. So. Um, so how do you configure bind itself to use DNS tap? Um, these are the three basic steps you do. There are three required library packages that you'll need to get, um, and we'll display those, I believe, on the next slide. Uh, you do have to build bind with enabled DNS tap. Uh, you need to do that uh, when you do your configure. Um, and then there are a few options that you need to add to namedy.conf. We'll look at some of these as well. So these are the, the three required library packages. Um, again, they are separate from Bind. Um, the protocol buff one is from Google. I'm assuming proto, proto buff C is from Google as well, but I'm not sure. Is that correct, Robert? Uh, no, it's actually an independent uh, implementation. And okay. uh, the, the, ori the original author, proto buff C, um, uh, so, sort of um, moved on to other projects, and it's actually I'm one of the administrators of the the Protobuf C organization. So there's a couple of uh, a couple of different people. Um, it's basically just like an open source project with no specific. Gotcha. Okay. So you're you're sort of on the hook for this one as well now. Then. 
<laughs> I'm just joking with you. <laughs> um, now the next one there is uh, the one that's um, how do you, how do you say this? Do you say F, FS stream or F stream? What's the correct pronunciation? Okay, I may have lost Robert. Can you hear me, Robert? Okay, and so until Robert returns, um, so F stream is, uh, again, it's one of the required um, dependencies that you'll have to install prior to using DNS tap with Bind. Um, one thing I really want to point out with, uh, if you're, if, if you're going, to, if you happen to want to play with DNS tap on Mac OS X, you can learn from my recent uh, painful experiences and go ahead and install the latest. Uh, it, it's the if you go to GitHub uh, for F, FS Stream, it's the it's the latest. Uh, it's the next branch. So there are some Mac OS specific fixes in there um, that I'm very grateful to Robert that he made. Um, that will make your life much easier when you're trying to play with this on Mac OS X. Uh, Robert, are you back by chance? Okay, somehow we've lost audio from Robert. So we'll just soldier on at this point. Um, so it's, this was one of the questions that was uh, asked in the chat room, what versions um, support DNS tap, what versions of bind? So um, there is uh, an available version uh, in the public source tree. If you go to our GitHub site, you can get um, a supported version um, or a, a version that has DNS tap support in it. Um, you can also, if you are a direct customer of ISC, um, uh, our direct customers have um, access to what we call our stable preview version, and that already does contain the DNS tap functionality. Um, it is included if you go to the isc.org website um, from our downloadable tarballs. There is um, in so th this is this is new functionality which has changes that are made to namebe.conf. And so whenever we have changes that are made to namebe.conf as sort of a general policy, these must go into a uh, a new major release of Bind. So with 9.11 is where you'll find the DNS tap support. And the alpha is actually available on the website now for download. Um, we do expect to have the stable final available, uh, stable final of 9.11 available in August of this year. All right. So um, once you download one of those versions of Bind, um, very simply you dot slash configure, dash dash enable DNS tap, and whatever other configure options that you usually use and then make make install, and you should be set to go as far as the build process. Um, now, in namedd.conf itself, there are four new options, uh, and these are DNS tap, um, DNS tap output, DNS tap identity, and DNS tap version. The first two of those are required if you're going to use DNS tap, so you have to tell bind what types of messages you want to log, and you have to tell Bind where you want to send these messages. Um, the other two are optional. So from the actual ARM, um, this will tell you more about the DNS tap option itself. Um, so note that you can set the types of messages to be logged per view, which we think is very handy, and we're excited to see how people are going to make use of that. Um, currently supported types are client, auth, resolver, and forwarder. Um, if you specify type all um, as your list uh, provided to the, to the DNS tap option, then it's going to log all your DNS tap uh, messages uh, regardless of type. Um, additionally, uh, by default, both queries and responses are logged. You can indicate that you only want to log queries uh, or responses. So some uh, flexibility there. 
Uh, and again, this is from the Bind 9 Administrator's Reference Manual. So we can all we can all leave this webinar and say we have read the fine manual just a bit today. So some examples in namedy.conf. Um, this first example here, we're only going to log authoritative DNS messages, uh, and this would be queries and responses. And then for resolver functionality, we're only going to log queries. We're going to send this output to a Unix socket. Um, or in the second example here, what we're going to do is turn DNS tap on for all messages that come, um, all DNS messages on this name server. And we're going to output these, uh, this data to a file in this case. The actual output examples I'm going to show you are from the second um, option here, or second configuration. So um, note that if you're going to do the messaging to Unix socket, you have to start FS or fstream uh, underscore capture prior to starting bind. The reason here is that um, if you're going to send something to a socket, then that socket needs to be available uh, prior to bind starting up. Okay. So assuming that we have um, done our builds correctly and our configuration correctly, then we're all good. This means we're getting some data. And how are we as humans, though, going to read said data? So with um, these versions of bind, there is a DNS tap read utility. And very simply, you just DNS tap read your file that you've written the DNS uh, tap messages to. So you'll see some things like uh, this is a very, it's sort of an abbreviated version of, of the data you get. So here we have a, a client query, a response query, and a, a recursive response as well. Uh, just the first three items there. So what I've done here is I've, I've started up DNS tap and I've done a dig for www.isc.org and what you're starting to see there is the name server, the query coming in and the name server doing the work to answer the client's query um, on my behalf. There are some options to DNS tap uh, read. Dash P will give you some more information. Um, here you actually see the, the DNS message headers as well. And then dash Y will output it in YAML format uh, if, if that's your preference or you want to see um, some more data. So I do want to point out that there is a known concern. So we've had uh, a few customers that have um, gone ahead and started mess, uh, playing around with DNS tap. And one of the main things that one of the main things that we've heard back is, hey, I need to be able to rotate these files because they get really large. Um, so the good news on that front is in the next releases of Bind, both the stable preview and the next release or the final release of 9.11.0, um, there will be sort of the standard Bind file uh, log rotation that you're used to. Um, and I also, I think we have Robert back now. so. Um, I'd like to have him chime in on, I know there's been some upstream modifications that he's been working on to um, address this as well, especially when you're writing to Socket. Yeah, uh, we actually just merged um, a pull request a couple of weeks ago um, to upstream uh, that will support, um, it should support, um, uh, well, yeah, uh, output file rotation. Um, that is in, that's on the next branch. Uh, we haven't actually done an official release with that functionality in it. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want, want that feature from upstream, you have to build okay. the uh, next branch. Okay. And now that we have you back, I think you dropped off for a bit, but I, I did want to thank you personally for the, the next branch of fstream uh, with the Mac OS X uh, modifications you made. <laughs> I, I had a really hard time working, uh, getting that working until you you put out that, so thank you. So with that, um, at this juncture, we'd like to hear sort of uh, from you, Robert, what your future pr plans are for DNS tap. Um, and then we have quite a few questions, so we'll we'll get to work on answering those. 
Well, uh, so as far as plans for Guinness Tap uh, go, um, I, I personally just changed companies, so I don't know um, whether I personally will be involved in uh, uh, the future development of Guinness Tap. Um, so my plans are really um, to just like sort of socialize the uh, uh, you know the community aspects of it. Now we've got a number of um, implementations of it. Um, we do have a uh, GNS Tap mailing list on GNS Tap Info. So if you're interested in joining that, you know, uh, it's currently a very, very small community, very uh, uh, low volume event. But, um, um, so I mean, um, I certainly heard uh, some interesting ideas from um, basically wish, wish list items from, from, from GNS operators. Um, so it might be uh, uh, good to, to work there and um, see about, you know, what should, what should we add next? What should we add next? To the DNS tap, and, and we should do that right. Um, in fact, uh, uh, you might, might even want to. So, I mean, um, we did, uh, you know, I, I personally did um, a lot of DNS tap work at ISC and then at Parsite. Um, Parsite is, of course, a uh, policy uh, stroke company, so there's a lot of uh, um, DNS experience there, and, and they're certainly. Um, have their own plans for DNS tap, but I mean, it, it's it's. I'm, I'm hopeful that it can turn into like a, uh, a, a consensus-based open source uh, uh, community with an open, you know, like a technology with an open specification. Um, so I, I don't I don't personally have any, any concrete um, plans uh, so far. Um, so feel free to uh, <laughs> feel free to step up and and, and uh, uh, you know, make a proposal and and, and uh, uh, implement it and. And gain consensus on that. Um, so yeah, sorry for the uh, kind of a, a, a squishy answer there, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No, it's it's good. I think um, uh, you know it's good. We do we do want to encourage uh, other folks to get involved as well. Um, and you mentioned the the DNS tap mailing list, and that is on uh, listed on the final slide here for reference. Um, when we get to that. Um, so Bill Martin asks, uh, is the worker queuing based on Beanstalk D? Uh, I don't know what Beanstalk D is. Um, it's, uh, so, um, so no. Uh, the, the worker queue is, is basically just, um, so the worker queue itself is, is in the upstream library. And we basically uh, bind or whichever GNS server that, that uses upstream is basically just calling into the upstream library and it creates uh, the worker there. But that, that was all um, um, custom development that we put into um, uh, upstream. It's fairly simple, um, uh, single producer, single consumer queue, and each, each, each thread gets its own, its own queue. But it was, it was all. Uh, um, a custom implementation. Okay. Um, and uh, someone has, has let us know that we're, we're having a little hard time hearing you. So um, I don't know, maybe if you can speak up, maybe that would help. I don't know. Uh, I think it's based on, uh, you know, cellular data problems. But anyway, um, here's another question. Should DNS tap database be implemented on a separate virtual machine? Do you have an opinion on that? Um, so we haven't really, um, so as far as databases go, there, uh, as far as I know, you know, there, no one's actually built a, a thing that takes DNS tap data and, and puts it into a database. Um, it, and it was certainly um, designed to be able to support uh, that that use case, um, but you know, it, it, I think it all depends on, um, you know, a, a, you know. A, what, 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 what your traffic load is and, and what the you know uh, performance of your virtual machine is, but you know as, as far as, as how to scale that, you know, it, it, I think I guess it all depends. Sorry. Okay. Gotcha. Um, I actually have a, a question for you. Uh, what what is the most interesting and or odd use of DNS tap that you've encountered so far? Anything that's so, caught you by surprise? Um, yeah. So. Uh, I don't. I don't really. I don't. I don't think I've been surprised by by any particular uses of, of DNS tap. Um, uh, probably, probably the most interesting thing is was plugging uh, <laughs> my own work here, but uh, I, I did a little uh, hack uh, based on DNS tap called uh, uh, D 
DP, who am I? Uh, I think there was a, 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 the slides are on, on the DNS Tampered Info website, but basically I did a lightning talk at, at an org. But um, uh, the DP, who am I thing would, would uh, it's basically uh, a custom authoritative name server which would um, take the uh, query you got from the resolver and encode it into the answer section using DNS tab. So you could actually, um, if you're a, just a random user of, 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 uh, of whatever resolver you're never given, you can uh, get a copy of the packet that the uh, resolver is sending to this you know, who am I authoritative uh, 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 name server. But it, 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 was, it was sort of based on, um, there, there are a couple of different services that will tell you um, the IP address of, of the resolver that the resolver uses to contact the authoritative name server. And so I just uh, decided to extend that to just to just show the whole packet into the into the response. Um, so there's a lightning talk I mentioned in that. So that's probably the weirdest use of DNS tab so far. Okay. <laughs> that that is an interesting one. Um, let's see, okay. Someone has asked and I'll take this one. Um, I assume that if you have a DDI vendor solution, you need to wait for them to incorporate this into their particular code. Usually their code is bind with some other unique things. So yes, um, if you are using one of our partner solutions, um, you'll need to wait until they, they implement into their, their particular solution. All right. Okay, here's a good one. Um, what guidance or operational experience can you share when it comes to aggregating or and or correlating DNS tap data across enterprise or campus DNS infrastructure? And I'll I'll defer that one to you, Robert. I I think you're back on mute. Yeah, sorry about that. The, uh, the WebEx interface was uh, a little bit squirrely on me. No worries. Could you, uh, could you repeat the question, please? Sure. So uh, what guidance or operational experience can you share when it comes to aggregating and or correlating DNS tap data across enterprise or campus DNS infrastructure? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, as far as um, aggregating and, and correlating um, the data that comes out, um, I mean, uh, DNS tap data that comes out of a server is just, you know, fairly raw. Um, you know, it's just a, you know, it's a stream, you know, it's a, it's a big, you know, stream of, you know, a fire hose of, of, of data. Um, and uh, unfortunately, at the moment, there's no really, like, off-the-shelf solution for, like, being able to search that or aggregate it or, you know, put it in a database or whatever. Um, so at this point, you know, it's the, the best, if, if you need that, you probably have to hire someone to, uh, to write that code and, and, and do that at the moment. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, I, I, I don't I really have a whole lot of, of experience with that sort of uh, enterprise use case. Okay. No, actually, that's, that's, that was a fine response. Um, so, actually, this is uh, another one which I meant to bring up as well, so this is good this question came in. Um, so, I mean, a lot of this is we, a lot of us wanted DNS tap so that we could um, have, you know, much better performance. Um, so the question comes in, could you give an idea of the performance implications of enabling DNS tap uh, in terms of query rate capacity or requirements on the platform to maintain performance? Um, I'd like to maybe add a little bit to that and just, you know, I, I know you've done some measurements in terms of uh, what enabling DNS tap has done. I'm curious, have you measured, you know, performance, you know, of sort of standard query logging versus uh, doing it with DNS tap enabled? So um, the best, the best um, material on that so far is, is probably the um, Nano Exploit deck on the DNS tap info site. Mm -hmm. um, that was uh, it's a little bit dated at this point, um, but probably still relevant. And um, unfortunately, unfortunately, that was before the um, uh, bind implementation, so this is pretty uh, uh, unbound. But the uh, scalability was a very big concern uh, uh, for me uh, when I was implementing uh, DNS tap, and and at least with both bind and unbound, um, we uh, turned on query logging, and you know 
know, had configured the right to disk or right to syslog or whatever. And when we benchmarked it, we found that the performance uh, really uh, sucked. Uh, and it was not scalable. And, and the reason, you know, I went back and looked at the code in Unbound and the code in Bind, and, and, and the reason typically comes down to um, everything bottlenecking through a single, you know, big mutex, a big clock. And obviously, if your uh, performance is based on having, you know, you know uh, many worker threads serving, you know, however many, uh, uh, however many worker threads, usually a you know, one or two threads per CPU or, or whatever. Um, if you have a lot of threads, then they all bottleneck on, on the, uh, uh, whether it's the um, syslog uh, call, a sys or library call, which uh, if you go and look at the um, uh, C library implementation, at least in Linux, you know, it's got a, a big uh, mutex that protects the whole, uh, the whole thing. Um, if you're using um, printf, I think, I think unbounds, uh, File output is based on fprintf, and, and that obviously also has a buffer and a, a lock that protects it. So, um, if you're using those those uh, uh, the typical library calls to, to implement logging, um, that that's typically going to cause a scalability, uh, a multi-thread scalability problem. Um, so we that's why we custom wrote a custom um, uh, ring buffer or multi-threaded. Uh, Ring buffer implementation that would that would uh, scale along. If you go look at the Nanog, uh, so I think it was Nanog 60, um, but the slide deck is on the uh, USTAP website. Um, we have some some very pretty uh, uh, graphs showing um, the performance impact of enabling DNSTAP um, unbound. And I suspect if you go and and uh, do the same um, benchmarks with with Bind, I suspect the results are going to be similar. But but we we got a very nice um, scalability. The scalability results um, from that, and enabling DNS tap would, would you know give you this constant you know give you this constant overhead, a certain amount of you know small constant overhead um, depending on your load, but it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't cause your performance to collapse due to that, um, that you know that big lock. Uh, but if you uh, again the big caveat is if you're looking for a specific um, level of performance, you're going to have to uh, uh, benchmark it yourself on your own. Your own hardware and your own uh, environment. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's good. Um, here's another interesting one. Um, is there any plan to be able to put the different log types to different log streams? For example, you could send client uh, to one socket and auth to another. So um, that's you know that's an, an implementation detail. I mean, if, if you uh, uh, if if if, if if you guys thought that that would be a good feature for buying, you know, it, it's, it's certainly um, you know, it's certainly set up different um, outputs for, for different types. But I don't, yeah, I mean, I mean that's certainly um, something you could do in the main server, um, or you could have a custom um, receiver that split it out into different um, uh, different outputs based on based on a type. That's uh, as far as I know, it's not something that exists, but it, it's certainly something that ought to be relatively easy to implement. If that was a, a, a Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. So certainly, uh, I think we'll we'll be opening a feature request on um, Bjorn's behalf for that one. Um, this is a, another interesting one as well for you, Robert. Um, so, what tools are there for aggregating DNS tap feeds and fanning out to downstream consumers? Um, yeah, unfortunately, um, not a whole lot. Um, most of the stuff that, that uh, we've got, you know, the upstream capture and the, um, uh, uh, the one in the one in bind are, are sort of like um, you know, the, the minimum minimum amount of functionality to get it to get it to work. I mean, it's certainly uh, um, something doesn't exist now, but it's certainly something that we uh, envisioned as, as you know wanting wanting to be able to enable, but um, not. Unfortunately, not, not something that exists in like a, a like an off-the-shelf um, uh, tool set. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, we've had several questions about that, so yeah, I think uh, it'd be nice if uh, if we see from the community more uh, contributed tools for doing these things and analyzing this data. Right, and and, and the big and the big big advantage of, of, of DNSTAP, um, since it's 
intended to be a you know, vendor neutral format that, that, that uh, um, multiple multiple name servers should be generating you know, similar identical uh, uh, formatted data. Um, you could certainly have uh, like, you know, collaboration between like you know uh, ISC, uh, internet labs, you know, like, you know, all, all the names uh, of the genus app. Uh, you know, maybe there is a um, you know a collaborative. Maybe, maybe there maybe, maybe you could have a collaborative effort to produce a a um, uh, genus tap toolkit. Uh, since servers all generate the same type of data, I mean, this, this rather than having everyone write their own tool to do this, you know, it's, it's certainly uh, because because the format is vendor neutral, you could have a a, um, a combined effort to produce that kind of tool set. Um, here's one for me, I think. Uh, so, uh, can I mix, at least in the beginning, classic blogging and new DNS tap? Uh, yeah, I don't see any issue with doing that. Um, I, I, that seems fine to me. Um, and let's see. So, another one. Uh, I assume we will see fully qualified domain, IP for the record, client IP. Uh, what else? What what new things will we see from DNS tap, if any? Um, do we get to see response time, query time, anything else like that? Uh, just from my little playing with, I mean, you see, you know, most of the same things that you see from Dig. But the nice thing is, you get to see uh, at least uh, when you're like logging all, um, you get to see again like the query come in, the recursive go out and do its thing. So you get to see. Um, a lot of what's happening, uh, more so than when you just fire off a series of, of digs. Um, do you have anything you want to add to that? To that question? Yeah. Yeah. So, so with uh, current uh, query logging um, in DG Bind, um, you basically get only a subset of the um, messages that are going in and out of the, of the server. Um, with DNS tap, you have this fine-grained. I think. I think. Yeah. I think uh, you were just showing. Um, the config examples, but you can selectively enable uh, not just um, queries from clients, but also responses to clients from the upstream upstream stuff. In, in the recursive case, when your you know, recursive resolver is sending uh, queries to, to authoritative name servers via the response attack, that's just directly not from something that actually exists in terms of logging functionality in, in, the, uh, in the name server. Um, so you, you, you sort of superset of, of the uh, uh, messages that, that they're uh, being sent and received. Um, as far as like FQDM and IP address and all that, um, port numbers, uh, UDP versus TCP, that's all, all stuff that um, uh, gets uh, uh, encoded into the DNS tap payloads. Um, uh, but I think one of the interesting things is you, uh, you also get um, uh, the either the zone information, like what zone uh, the record was served out of. Um, if you're uh, an authoritative name server, and or if you're uh, uh, the cursor resolver, you also get the equivalent information, which is the, the data rate, um, and uh, it's also um, also log. There's there's some metadata you can get. You can get the um, identity and, and and version number uh, of the server, and these are options you can enable. I guess like uh, so you have the um, any cast. Say you say you've got an AnyCast service address that uh, uh, answers queries and all have the same uh, service address in this AnyCast system. You can um, have DNS tap log like the name of the server that, that answered that query. And if you were just looking at um, PCAPs, you might uh, you might have to um, depending on how it's how you're capturing, you you wouldn't be able to dis, uh, disambiguate based on IP address. You might have to look at the MAC address or something. Uh, assuming you have the you've actually captured the, the layer two. That is. Um, there's also um, because because we, we log the full uh, wire format query, uh, we also get stuff like um, you know everything that comes in on the wire. So stuff like EDS option codes, um, especially unknown EDS option codes. So the, the traditional model with query logging is the server has to know what it wants to log and, and format it. But, but if you have a uh, um, unknown stuff, you know for Whatever. Um, that, that's that's also a snippet log with DNS uh, tap. Um, and the, the nice thing about the protocol 
format is it accessible? And if there's no stuff that needs to be logged, you know, it's just, just something extra that can be added. Um, I think there's been proposals to add stuff like um, uh, like cache mess information, whether the response was served out of cache or not. Um, I'm not sure the status is of that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's definitely a lot. Um, you know, it, it's, it's extensible, and, and there are hell of a business to uh, add various things to it. So but if, if you can think of something that, 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 that can be added and, and, and uh, uh, extended, um, feel free to make a proposal and, and, and even, even write some code if you happen to be a uh, name server developer or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for that. That was really good. Um, so there is a Farsight specific question. Uh, if you can answer it, great. If not, we'll uh, we'll defer and and have we'll we'll get the the, the questioner in in contact with Farsight. But um, so Farsight SIE published their old PCAP passive DNS collection code. Uh, do they publish an equivalent for a DNS tap? Um, so yeah, uh, I'm no longer at Farsight. Um, uh, I know we, we were definitely uh, uh, pushing um, DNS tap functionality when I was there, uh, but you probably want to uh, uh, find find the uh, first site searching app. And I think I think Ben April might even be on the on the webinar. He's my old boss at, at first site, but if he's on. You might be able to answer. Okay. Yes, he is on. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is: Are there any programming examples, guides, and so on for creating your own receiver? I think you might have some info on this on uh, dnstap.info, but I'll, I'll let you respond. Uh, unfortunately, not, not a whole lot. I mean, the the, um, the protocol is like if you wanted to uh, do everything from scratch, the the, uh, the frame stream protocol that, that we use is is uh, good thing is it's a very simple um, byte stream uh, protocol, but the bad thing is it's, it's not we're not fully documented how the protocol works. Documented some parts of it, but not, but not um, everything that, that is, is needed to do that. Um, if you're reusing um, that library or, or just reusing some of the code, um, definitely, uh, definitely start from um, the upstream capture uh, utility uh, in, the, in the source tree. Um, there's also a uh, GoLang implementation of uh, both uh, frame streams and, and, and DNS tap. Uh, which uh, we wrote at Farsight. Um, and I think there's also some uh, uh, implementation in, in Bind where it's got a utility that, that um, functions as a, as a receiver. So my recommendation there would be to find find an existing um, utility and, and just look at that, at, at that source code. Okay, excellent. Um, so at the moment, it looks like we've answered most of the questions. Uh, I know Vicki has been answering some in the chat window as well, so thank you for that, Vicki. Um, so um, so I, I think we're coming close to the end. If you have any last minute questions, please do get them in. Um, and we have some references here. Uh, DNSTAP.info is sort of uh, the site for information, all things DNSTAP. Uh, and then there's the mailing list um, that we spoke about earlier uh, that can be found here. And um, there's a Brian Reed at IC did a configuration guide, uh, short little article on getting DNS tap going with uh, Bind 9.11. Um, and we've had one uh, an additional question come in about um, aggregation. So. If I have 100 resolvers, um, will I end up with a DNS tap log file on each one? And how do I figure out how to aggregate those logs uh, for replaying them later? Any uh, any tips on aggregation, Robert? So um, as far as like collecting them all up, um, I, I see. I am not sure what the status is of like being able to. Um, like send send all if you have 100 resolvers, you want to send that data to a centralized collector point, like you know, just log or or net looking. Is there this pattern of uh, that kind of approach? Um, that was definitely something we wanted to to have, and, and it's it, we sort of need like a little uh, uh, little utility that that can um, uh, uh, 
uh, just you know forward it over a TCP socket or, or whatever, something like that. Um, I don't think that currently exists, uh, but it would be a relatively simple addition to the um, the Estrin library. Um, I'm not sure if that is type of aggregation uh, the uh, question is referring to. Um, there's also certainly you could also um, uh, to sort of a semantic um, like uh, uh, deduplication of, of, of uh, stuff that's in there. But I think for, for, for query logging, you probably don't want to do deduplication and have an exact um, query log. Uh, so unfortunately, that's that's not something that, that that's also <laughs> that's not something that, that, that currently exists in like off the shelf uh, functionality. But it's 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 definitely something that uh, um, should probably exist. And um, I would so that's so that's like a really incredible feature. I mean, maybe maybe that's something a, a uh, um, DNS tap um, tool set developer could should should tackle. Um, I mean, uh, uh, that definitely you know. Um, you know, it, it, it's not necessarily bind and DNS task specific. It's, it's probably, you know, any any uh, 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 DNS tap uh, uh, users is probably going to be interested in that kind of functionality. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, and the 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 questioner said that yes, that uh, answered his question. So so thanks. Um, and uh, another chimed in that yes, aggregation from many servers would be highly appreciated. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's something that we are, are noting, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll come up with some tools. Uh, the community and, and possibly IC will come up with some tools to uh, to do some aggregation, or at least we'll be given some thoughts how to best do that. So. Um, okay, well I think that's uh, everyone's questions. Uh, if we missed any, we do uh, we do go back and review the log, and if we missed any that we didn't answer, uh, we'll attempt to reach out to you individually. Uh, we do thank you for joining today. Um, again, I want to thank Robert many, many times over for, for his work on DNSTAP and for joining us here today. So uh, thanks a bunch for that. And um, if you want to reach us, there's the ISC website, and uh, you can all, always email us at info at isc.org. So again, there will be a recording of this, and we'll be uh, sending it out to everyone. I do apologize for some of the audio problems we have. That's uh, sort of uh, the nature of these things. So but my apologies for that, uh, and we hope you found it useful. So until next time, uh, take care. <laughs>